You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's of you to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Where the Demon Lurks. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Alright. Yeah, typical of mayor. A small spider bot no bigger than a grain of rice sleeps off King's shoulder unnoticed and crawls up the ceiling to sit on the PA speaker. It glows red. Cameras are on high, mortal. Or on. Hi, mortal. Uh, hi. King waves hesitantly in the direction of the PA system. Anyways, the alpaca is right. We've got to fulfill his basic needs if we plan to send him back to Earth in one piece. Then you do it, if you're such an expert. I'm already on it. Kobu previously wanted to acquire mortal snacks without going through the hassle of traveling to the mortal plane. So, he requested that I build a processor that could turn out the things he wanted. I just need to make sure it's working right. And check if it still has that bug whereby it explodes when coming in contact with water. Ugh. Right, and, and that means I need entertainment, too. You're a prisoner. What do you need entertainment for? Well... The yeah, alpaca puffs his chest and tries to look intimidating. He steps closer to the large demon and pokes him in the chest. Well, wow, this is solid. King retracts his hand and tries to start over. Well, I'll go crazy if I just remain stuck in this room with nothing to do. At least get me something to read. Fortis huffs and growls. Fine, read this. He grabs a nearby jar of coffee powder and shoves it towards the alpaca's snout. King f King slaps Fortis's hand away. Hello, honey. Reading the label off a jar of coffee powder isn't stimulating. Puh, what, I was, what was I expecting? You meatheads down here are the same as the ones up on Earth. You're, only about, you're all only about the games. Excuse me, I happen to be very well read. I'm not the second strongest demon general just by getting by on my strength alone. Number two, I flush a number... I flush a number two down my toilet every morning, mister. Ooh. King and Fortis look sternly at the PA system. Sorry, carry on. Fortis's entire body tenses. As a result, his, heat, his body heat skyrockets, making the alpaca take a few steps back in order to keep his fleece from catching on fire. Listen here, you are in no position to make demands. You're gonna be a good little mortal and just sit here and take what I give you. They both leer at each other, neither budging on their stance. If you're going to leave me to be bored out of my brains, I'll go on a hunger strike. Oh yeah? Well, this meathead has created chasms with these arms. I'm sure I can open that pretty mouth of yours and make you eat. Do it and I'll bite your finger. Ha! So if you can hurt me, I might just like it. The sound of crunching popcorn echoes through the room from the speaker system. I'm there! Oh, oops. Ah, I forgot I had my mic on. Fortis turns back to the alpaca. Wispy steam emanates from Fortis as the sweat dripping from down the demon's bot fit. Down the demon's fist evaporates from his intense body heat. He takes in one deep breath and his body temperature drops. Bah! He closes his eyes for a while, then opens them again. Sports magazine's okay for you? Okay, but I'm gonna need a box of tissues if you're gonna make me read that. What? For the inspirational sports story segments, you know. The parts where they talk about how they got into the sports and all that. Right. Portis shakes his head and leaves the portal. Not what I was thinking. <laughs> That's not what I was thinking he was needing the tissues for, but yeah, I'm a perv, what can I say? Anyway. Boy, he's grumpy, huh? King sighs loudly and places his hands on his hips. I'm sorry, a mare, was it? Yep, yep. You sound like a nice demon. Can I have some privacy so I can rest? Oh, don't worry. These recordings are merely for research purposes. Come on, what if I need to do some private things? I encourage that completely. Go for it. I want you to do whatever comes naturally to you. Then I'll smash your bug. I welcome you to try. It would give me valuable data for the next model. While you do so, let me play some relaxing music to go with it. I'll be there soon with the food machine. Have fun! General Music starts playing for the spider bot. King Chai is defeated. He walks over to a nearby chair and sits down. Things would be easier without a camera watching him, but his time in the convenience store has long taught him how to avoid such surveillance. Now, how do I steal the key from that walking bulldozer? <laughs> Second, y'all, it is indeed water time. Okay. The evening sun paints the sky warm orange hue. Though the peaceful atmosphere would be welcoming for anyone after a hard day of work, you still have things to do. Lucian leads you to the shopping district. At the entrance, he pulls out his halo and taps it on taps it on, and twice and taps it twice on top. A layer of static covers the halo, transforming it into a tablet. Neat feature. What's with the dog ears on the protectors, though? I just, I thought they were cute. 
Angel turns his attention back to the device and walks on. He raises an eyebrow as Lucian starts and stops walking sporadically. No, wait. He suddenly pivots and walks into a boutique. Lucian! You follow him inside, being led around the shop. He walks straight through a track of rack of dresses that you have a hurt that you have to that you have to hurriedly pull off his head on his way back out the door. Lucian, where the heck are you going? I'm following the signal. Keep up. The pinging rises and falls with no discernible pattern, but the dog relentlessly follows its beck and call, leading him into yet another store. You let him enter on his own. Within five minutes, someone screams, followed by a loud slapping sound. Lucian rushes out of the store and briskly walks past you. He's covering his left cheek with one hand while his other hand keeps a steady grip on the halo, never taking his eyes off it. He mumbles something here himself before walking through a crowd, cutting off and bumping into anyone he crosses despite their exasperated cries. You walk behind him with your head low. Sorry, sorry. Reaching out and seizing, seizing Lucian's wrist, you yank him to a halt. Dude, stop running around at random, you're bothering people. But the halo says the gate is somewhere here. Do you see a door moving around? It doesn't have to be a literal gate, it's just a name. The thing could be floating for all I know. That's cl There's clearly nothing here. Well, well, but the, the halo! It probably needs a good tap. Give it here. You grab the device and grin, smack it against your thigh several times. Hey! Lucian quickly grabs the item back. Stop that! That's not how you treat God's gift! Dude, it's obviously not working. No, God doesn't make mistakes. It found you, and it was working right before we got into this part of the town. Just let me figure out the pattern here. The gate is definitely here, I just need to know how it's moving. You let it a long sigh. I'm not doing this. I'll go search on my own. Don't go too far. He walks off, leaving you stranded in the middle of the street. Pursing your lips, you rack your brain wondering what to do next. Where to start? A gate that can break through the realm of the living? That would have taken up, up tons of soul energy. Not to mention the ritual would have required a lot of space. So if I want to find that, I can... What can I do? I've got nothing. You're instantly tantalized by the urge to find a bench and take a break. No, stop being me. Stop being, stop being such a me and think. King needs help. What would he do in this situation? He'd probably ask around. Yeah, probably somebody who looks like they know a lot, too. Someone must have seen that seen some of that construction work. I need someone who would be I need someone who would be here most of the time. Looking around, your gaze falls upon a lonely street side vendor. Half a roasted chicken hangs behind the food display case as though proudly announcing to the world, Look at how good my food is and get it while it lasts. It's the only stall still open. The rest had either closed for the day or were never in business to begin with. Considering you have nothing to lose, you head over to the chicken rice stall in question. A slender man wearing an apron stained with brown sauce stands up from his seat. He smiles warmly at you. Hi there! Want some, some, want some chicken rice? I've got some juicy roasted chicken. I'll take two, both breasts. I've got some roasted pork for another three dollars. He pulls up a slab of crispy pork from a, from a compartment behind his stall. There's not much left, but the bright orange crust from the roasting the pork skin spurts your appetite. Spurs your appetite, not spurts your appetite. Jesus, weird. Hmm, just chicken is five dollars already. I think, no. The vendor nods and starts preparing the dish. Um, business looks good. Of course, my chicken rice is the best in town. I've been selling it for a decade. Trust me, try elsewhere all you like, but you'll love mine so much you'll be back in no time. Second y'all. Water time. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. What time do you usually start selling? I'm here from breakfast to dusk. Hey, then you must have seen a boatload of interesting things go on around here. My friend and I are actually looking into supernatural spots in town. Ah, you one of them tube people? Not really. My friend just likes to hear about mysteries and creepy stories. Why don't you take them to the old Kibbleton Hotel by the hillside? People are disappearing all the time over there. Yeah, we'll check that out later, but what about here? Come on, you must know something interesting about this part of town. Maybe or maybe not. I've got a lot of chicken and pork to sell. Perhaps if I had less on my plate, I could recall better. His eyes dart towards the pork and back at you. Blowing your eyes, you pull out your wallet. You know what? I think I'll take that roasted pork with my chicken. Two servings of roasted pork coming right up. So... So, you see that street over there? I see a... A sign labeled salt, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> he points down the road to his left, leading beyond several rows of closed shop, shop lots. Oh yes, and down the street is a, is a sign with pepper on it. Yeah, what about it? That's Doberwalk 1. We're on Doberwalk 2. All the businesses that used to be on Doberwalk 1 either moved here or closed down permanently. So it's a bad business location? Yeah, probably has some shitty feng shui. There's some rumors that all the bad businesses started with the death of the arcade owner who owed money to the local gang. 
Since then, those who walk that street sometimes hear a painful scream come from inside the arcade. Or a sickeningly overpowering feeling of being watched by hundreds of eyes. What? I I've never heard of that one. It's bad for business to talk about it. People who know someone was murdered instinctively wonder if they'll be next. That's the main reason we all shifted our premises here. Start clean. How real exactly are those rumors? Personally, I, I believe it. I walked that street a while back. I swear I heard... my... The man trails off. You're curious, but you decide not to press it. His hand trembles as he closes the lid on the packed food. He fumbles with the plastic forks and spoons as he bundles it in your takeaway together with a rubber band. He hands you the food in a bright purple plastic bag, handing him money and handing him money in return. After paying for the meal, you store it inside your backpack. The vendor thanks your patronage and begins to close this stall. You ponder about the new information as you walk over to find your stray angel. Lucian! Hmm? What is it, Kobu? Well, any luck? Why, yes, I've managed to decipher the movement of the gate. Look! Lucian shows you the tracking tool. The radar, displays a the radar display shows a dot moving across the screen before bumping on the edge of the display and moving in a perpendicular direction. Are you showing me your screensaver? I know what it looks like, but I'm confident we can catch that gate if we find the boundaries that cause the gate to bounce around. Or we could check out this lead I got instead. What lead? The chicken rice vendor I talked to mentioned a former arcade where someone died. Since then, no one goes to that area. Sounds like the perfect place to build a gate. Lucian taps his mouth with his forefinger. He gazes far in the direction of the street you mentioned, then back at his tablet. No, no, we need to stick to this. This is Lord Gary's plan, and he knows what's best. Come on, we're wasting daylight chasing a screensaver. Lord Gary is never wrong. He made the perfect device for this task already. Well, I'm going with or without you then. He takes several steps in the direction of the haunted street before turning back to face Lucian. Here I go, all alone. This is real and I die, it's on you. Fine, I'm coming. The streets of Doberwalk, Doberwalk 1 bear the scars of, of a place long forgotten. Weeds have taken root in the cracked hallway, cracked wallways, cracked walkways. The road is now a milky gray. No one has bothered to, retar to retar it. Lucian, though by your side, would keep darting his head back to where you both came from. Would you relax? If I'm wrong about this, we can go chase that bouncing gate whenever. Second now, water time. Gotta keep that throat dry if you want to keep my boy's voice high. Anyway. There's no guarantee we'll still be there. If the gate can move, anything is possible. It was a handful getting this far. Your doubts resurface, but you persist on forward until you reach the arcade. A two-story structure with strips of white paint that has peeled off over time, dang over time dangles delicately. They shiver against the gentle breeze. The metal rafters have been pulled down on the main entrance. A splattered smear of red paint lies faded upon the metal surface. But what happened to this place? And what's with this slapdash paint job? It's not a paint job. It's a warning gangs use. They toss red paint on someone's property as a sign that they need to pay up or else. What a disgusting mortal custom. It's just how it's done. You borrow money from the wrong people, then there's a price to pay. Money? The greed of mortals sits wrongly with me. Is that your whole beef with their kind? They love money too much? It's one on a very long list. Look, you don't know what it's like having to attend to their every need in heaven. Despite your judgment in the underworld, the souls up there retain much of their personalities. And that shows in the fantasies that they ask Lord Gary to draw up. I just, I hate seeing Lord Gary working himself to the bone for them. When in life, they'd rather give their soul to money. Cheer up, not everyone is like that. Your optimism, much like this plan, is not very inspiring. There's still no sign of the gate. Shh, listen. Your ear perks up at the sound of a muffled scream. Did you hear that? Lucian raises his ears and looks about. His eyes widen. It's faint, almost ghost-like. It's coming from inside the arcade. Help me find a way in. You circle the side of the arcade and find a side door with a lone window covered in yellow newspapers. You grab the door handle and give it a good twist, but it won't open. Damn, it's locked. You wouldn't happen to know how to pick a lock, would you? Lucian shakes his head. Well, how do you propose we go in? Let me help. Both of you scream at the top of your lungs. Oh my god. Lucian grabs you by your arm and kicks the door where Toast's head popped out of. The lock breaks with a loud crack and the door swings open. Dude! It's not my fault, he scared me! Toast snorts with laughter. 
Oh my god, I was gonna offer to unlock it from the inside, but that was way more fun. Lucian, you throw dirty looks at the ghost. The angel lets go of you and instantly pulls out a feather. Let me kill him. No, don't! Toast, you better have a good explanation for why you're here. Not much to explain. I was looking for you, but I saw you were hanging around with, uh... He points at Lucian without really acknowledging him. So I figured if he was going to give you a hard time, I'd, it'd be better if I stuck around to bail you out if he got you into trouble. Me? Hello, I do not get into trouble. Sure you don't. Toast, we're doing something important here. You don't want to get involved unless you want to go back to the underworld. What? If you're doing something dangerous, then you're going to need me. Toast? Come on, you two don't look like you know a thing about breaking in. At least let me be the lookout. I don't trust him. Your hunch tells you to place some trust in him, despite being a condemned soul. A hand hasn't done anything suspicious after after how you unintentionally helped him out back then. We don't have time to debate this. His idea isn't that bad. Let's just let's just let him keep an eye out for us. Fine, but I'm keeping an eye on you, ghost. Beaming, Toast floats up to the roof. We better work fast. You immediately spot numerous footprints on the dusty floor when entering. You give your eyes some time to adjust to the dark. The only light is from the doorway you entered from, and it's rapidly fading as, dust, as dusk approaches. You take out your phone and turn on the flashlight. A soft thud followed by a click of a tongue alerts you. You turn your flashlight to the source, hoping to meet its source. What do you find is Lucian rubbing his snout. Alright y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye